Hello folks, welcome to Hobby Nightmares. Today we will be covering somebody who may be the most insufferable customer Games Workshop have ever had. If you used to work for Games Workshop and you're sitting there saying, no way North, that couldn't happen, trust me, you'll be surprised. We'll be getting into that a little bit later on, but first, let's go over a very quick Hobby Nightmare that had me chuckling a lot and it may have me chuckling again because when I was on the train earlier, I read this and I just thought this is amazing. So Gravy Grave is back, ladies and gentlemen. And he says, Hello, Northy North. Hello, Gravy Grave. It's Gravy Grave back again. But this time with a funny thing that happened at a team tournament event this past weekend. In a team tournament, you pair up with opponents from the opposite team. The thing that cracked everybody up in the beginning of the tournament was before the first round pairings even began, when the event organiser held his opening speech. This is a direct translation from our language. As he had welcomed everybody, he conjugated the verb in a sentence, let's pair up, incorrectly, because he wasn't a native speaker. So he told everybody, let's copulate. <laughs> Oh, no. just made me laughing. <laughs> I'm literally sitting there on the train, just re reading that and just chuckling my cock off on the train. That's so funny. Oh my god. Everybody laughed and you could hear people saying things like, well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> and I didn't even have my first coffee yet. It literally broke the ice and everybody had an amazing time. But, but before every new round, someone, usually me with my juvenile sense of humour, shouted, All right, next round pairings, let's copulate. <laughs> Thanks for the channel and what, <laughs> what was the brand of your tea? I've had some Yorkshire tea and it wasn't that good. Must have been the wrong brand, gravy grave. Um, I don't know whether you... If, to be fair, with tea, you can do it wrong. So you may have had a Yorkshire tea and then somebody drowns it in milk or somebody doesn't put enough milk in. So, you know, once you've had one of my Yorkshire teas, then you can say whether you really like Yorkshire tea or not. All right? Cool. And that's from a, and that's from a Lancashireman as well. You know? I may be in Merseyside, but I still consider myself a Lancashireman. Merseyside doesn't exist. It's a load of nonsense, right? We're in Lancashire. This is, is what it is. And there we go. If you like what I do, I'm, I've lost all the Scousers there. They've all left. But if you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below. If you could use that button, it would really, really, really help me out in the algorithm. I would help the channel grow some more as well we are on our way to 16,000 subscribers by the end of the year if we can get there that'd be amazing you guys were awesome for helping me to 15 that was my target this year so 16 is the bonus let's try and hit it also next year we're going for 20,000 subscribers by june if you get there then my god the, the, the sky is the limit the sky is the limit so thank you very much for those of you who've already helped out okay so Next up in Hobby Nightmares today, it is Nids. Nids has been a, a, a good poster on here for a while. Hmm. He says, Hello North. First, I wanted to thank you for your continued support with the Hobby Mental Health and for your reaction to my last Hobby Nightmare with the shoplifter. It has given me the confidence to start writing the fiction stories I have in my head when I find some time. I have a grim, dark 1940s world I think many would enjoy, as I've used it in a role-playing game campaign that lasted for several years. Let me know if you would like to hear the highlights for another day. Yeah, man, I love reading. One of the main things I like reading from fans is uh, settings. If you have your own settings, I love reading those, even more than chapters. A few people have sent me in Space Marine chapters, and I will read them out eventually. Um, it's just finding the time to do it in the week, do you know what I mean? I may maybe, maybe it could be a weekend video. We'll see. Anyway, however, today I am writing with a sunken heart as a co-worker of mine just recently passed away and this has hit me pretty hard emotionally. I wanted to honour his memory by sharing a bit about him and share some of his passion with the community. Tim and I both work in uh, the electronic manufacturing industry, building circuit boards for many products used from medical aid, military and others like SpaceX for years. I had the utmost respect for Tim, from his knowledge of the industry and from his experience with the machines in our plant, it was e it even felt weird 
for me to recertify his training every two years on how to build circuit boards, as he's been in the industry far longer than I had. He was also a talented musician that was somehow turned away from becoming a mainstream rocker. He has a YouTube channel that I'll share with you at the end of this email. Please help me honour him by listening to his music the next time you have a hobby. Okay. Right. I learned of his passing at work at an abrupt all-hands meeting uh, call over the intercom. The president of the company had a default time to get the words out while looking at the floor. I, I'm, I'm sure you're going to say difficult there, but you said default. I'm going to say that's difficult. So we had a difficult time getting the words out whilst looking at the floor. I found my hands covering my face before the tears started to well up when he announced Tim's passing. The room erupted in gasps and mournful sobbing upon hearing this. Women that worked with or near him all became distraught. That's a good sign. I'm sorry, that's a good... I'm sorry. Tim, my buddy. Ah, oh, that's a good sign. <laughs> I'm just saying. When all the women who worked around you are, are distraught that you passed on. Yeah, buddy. You know? My friend Rob slammed his fist on the table in anger. You could feel the sorrow in the room weighing down on everybody. When asked if we had any stories to share about Tim, only one person gave a short thanks to him as the rest of us tried to comprehend that we were never going to see him again and how much of a loss he was going to be to us and our company. With all the stress of the, of the end of month shipments, issues and growing house repairs, possible car issues, and now the loss of a stoic co-worker, I began to lose it. I honestly didn't know how I finished the day. Actually, I kind of do. After listening to your tip on meditations and clearing your mind, I knew what I needed to drown myself in. The hobby. Mrs. Nids and I needed to go for a drive and pick up some groceries after work. We chatted about funny dreams we'd had, memes and other things that began to cheer me up. I figured that since we were near my local hobby shop, I might as well pick up another unit for my army. By the way, thank you for showing me the light, North. I started Grey Knights. Oh, fucking great, great. Abs. Just fist pumping in here like a little bitch. Yeah. Suck on that, Space Wolf. Uh, you've earned yourself a nice sip of tea and a look at the attached image of my most recent work. Yes, yes. Have you, have you given me Grey Knights? Come on, let's have a look. Let's have a look here. Grey Knights, Grey Knights, Grey Knights. Oh. Hello. Very nice. Very nice. I like it. I like it. You've inked them properly as well. Very nice. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff, man. Let's have a look over here. Yeah, you, you can't do eyes either. I can't do eyes. Eyes like the worst thing for, for me to do on an army. That's why I don't do uh, normal heads. These guys look amazing, by the way. And, oh, I just noticed. They're Primaris Grey Knights. Ah ha ha ha. They're Primaris sized Grey Knights. So if you want to know what my army looks like, think about this, but well, painted differently. And that's basically what my army looks like. Primaris Grey Knights. Oh my god, brilliant. The kit actually, look, actually works really well. It really does. This is the first time I've been able to see it that's not been one of my models. See what I mean, though? It does work. That looks great. That looks great. I love that. Anyway, I'll, I'll carry on with what you're saying. Um, Alright. Sure enough, after a, a fury of sipping of snipping plastic and the smell of plastic glue, I felt my sorrows melt away. Tim was a cool dude, and I won't forget him or anything he taught me. Even as I'm writing this, I have the, I have the music of Tim McMillan and Greg Hutto playing. Hearing his voice again has brought me back to reality with comfort. Thank you again for your hobby nightmare readings and your words of wisdom on mental health. You are proof that not all heroes need power. Cheers, man. Hope, hope, uh, uh, happy hobby, everybody, and rock on, Tim McMillan. You will be missed. Nids. Cheers, man. That's lovely. What a lovely, lovely sentiment to end it with. And uh, yeah, I, I really am glad that the hobby helped you. It can help you. I've said this so many times. Uh, meditation is really, 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 really important to one's mental health. Doesn't matter where you are. If you can focus yourself down onto the hobby, mate, 
you are doing so, 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 so well. Especially if you can switch off your brain. I found that quite a few times. You can switch off your brain whilst you're doing your hobby. Th that nothing can touch you, dude. You're doing really, really, really well. Um, I, I said it before in, in the Q&A when I said something about the, the Zen moment, right? They've got, I've got friends who are, in, who are in mar into martial arts. And they say, look, when you do things like painting Warhammer, you get into a, shall we say, an ultra-concentrative state where your body... It's almost moving without you needing to tell it to do things, right? You're painting a model and your hand is almost moving on its own without you needing to concentrate on it. One thing I would always advise you, if you are studying for a test and you're listening to things when and trying to concentrate on them, do some painting. Paint some Warhammer miniatures whilst you're doing it. I did that at university and it helped me so much. So I did uh, ancient history and classics and I had to remember dates, names, events, themes, all these other arguments from different scholars over the years. And I retained so much from doing models. I, I would literally paint models. And because my brain was open, like the gates of your brain are open when you do that, because you're not watching them like a hawk, and all of the information just flows in, comes straight in. And you, and you can close it again when you finish doing your, your painting, and if you had to go and write about what you've what you've been listening to, you could do it dead easily. No problem at all, right? Same thing goes if you don't want to think of anything. Put some music on and do some painting. The best meditation a geek can have. We're so lucky to have it, but recognize what it is. It's meditation, guys. You're literally meditating. If you, if you paint and you have music on in the background or in your headphones, you're literally meditating. Your mind is open and you are completely and utterly present in the moment. You're not thinking about anything. Your brain is empty. Absolutely emptied of everything apart from the pursuit of the perfection of your art and what you're doing. You know? You ever seen things like, like The Last Samurai when the, where, and, and other movies like that, like Ran as well, where they're saying, have you ever read the book Shogun? When, when they're saying that when we practice, we want our bodies to get into a state when we're in a fight, we're not thinking. Our, bodies is, our body is just reacting. In fact, the most skillful martial artist won't be thinking about what he's doing at all. His body will be doing things and his mind will be utterly calm and present. And, and he might be even just like looking straight ahead and not even looking at the person who's trying to fight him, right? That that's never happens, obviously. That's all in the movies. But that's the, that's the point that people want to get to. As near to that as they can. And the nearest we get as hobbyists is painting models. So make sure you do it. Take advantage of it. All right. Let's uh, let YouTube do a bit of an ad break here, shall we? So YouTube, whilst I take a sip of tea, take it away. I'll see you after the break. How was your ad break? Was it all right? Hopefully they did put an ad there. That would be quite nice. And it would show that their AIs are working well. If not, hey, you had a little bit of a break from me talking. And uh, everybody needs that once in a while. So, Greg Lesmeg says, All right, North. Hello, Greg. I've wanted to write in for some time and wanted to regale you with the story of a young man named Gary. My local games workshop was lovely. I moved away a few years ago now so I haven't really been back there since and now have a really good club that I go to. Before I get into the hobby nightmare, I just have to tell you something. I feel really alone right now. Like, totally. Even when surrounded by acquaintances, I know they are just that. Acquaintances and not real friends. I live away from my family doing a job that I love, but it's also a job that I do from home. I didn't start that way, but gradually my job became remote over the pandemic. Social interactions are at a minimum, and I just struggle to get out of bed in the morning. In fact, sometimes I don't at all, and I just lay there, numb and vegetating. Can you offer me some advice before we start? Um, yeah. Uh, I, I know I know what you're going through, number one. I know what you're going through. Um, I lived in a place for, for a while that, again... I struggle to get up. I struggle to, to motivate myself to do anything. The thing is, with these kinds of interactions, man, 
we're, like we're wanting to to not be alone anymore there's only one person who can fix that and that's you that's not something you can really go to therapy for do you know what i mean you can go to therapy to fix things about yourself and, and, to, and to be more present and aware of yourself and who you are that really helps but actually getting out there and meeting people therapy won't do that for you you know so you need to go out there and do that yourself best way to do that you mentioned you had a good club there go there and talk to people now i get completely that if you have a good game with somebody at your local club asking them to go for a beer afterwards might be seen as a bit homo all right or just like asking a girl out you may be frightened of actually you know shall we say being turned down and looking weird and looking rejected for it don't don't as long as you approach every single interaction in your life with complete honesty in who you are and what you want, you won't come across as weird. I'm telling you, the more honest and open you are and you say, look, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that, you know, you know, do you want to go for a beer? It works. But most of the time it works. If you're open and, and you both had a really good game and that guy doesn't have anything on, you say, hey, do you want to go get a beer? He'll go, yeah, sure, right? Nobody's saying no to that. I certainly wouldn't say no to that definitely not if they've got time you know and they're not rushing off or they haven't got or, or, or they can have a few pints without feeling like bad about having a few pints they're gonna go and do it okay make sure you're putting yourself on the batter's mount okay you can't hit home runs unless you're having the ball thrown at you that's it same thing i say for approaching women same thing you can't hit a home run if you're never having the ball thrown at you Swing and miss as much as you want. Take a swing, have a miss. Doesn't matter. As long as you're on the batter's mound, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. And as long as you keep doing that, man, you will find friends and you'll find people that you like. Come on to the Discord. The Discord, there's lots of people there. There's a, there's a game finder there. There are, there are ways and means to meet people. Uh, we've had many people meet in real life off the Discord and things like that. So, you know, we've got our own event in June coming up. So maybe look at that as something to look forward to as that's where i'm going to meet loads of friends and come onto the discord and put your prep work in because a lot of people who are on the discord will be going to the real life event in june so maybe come onto the discord and talk to people and, and do it that way there are people here who would like to speak to you i'm telling you now all right but don't ever feel like you're alone especially not on this hobby for god's sake that's the, that's, that's the antithesis of what the hobby's about uh, <laughs> so there, that's my advice anyway anyway he says on to the hobby nightmare I was friends with a guy called Chris, top bloke, always smiling and laughing during games and we talk about 40k near constantly. For a long time though, I noticed that Chris suffered a bit with that thousand yard stare, kind of like the look strippers get when they're looking straight ahead without looking at the customer in movies and stuff. When I asked him what was going on one time, he told me quite openly that he was a recovering drug addict. Bam, just like that. And that the drugs he used to take would help him with his depression and anxiety. He was sober and doing well and had been for a few years, but sometimes he just lapsed in his mind a little. He described it as being like Frodo in Lord of the Rings when he falls over in Bree and the ring slips onto his finger. He goes into a phantom world for a few seconds and then takes it off to get back to this one. It happens. I understood. We spoke no more about it, but I'd always make sure to check on him when I saw that far away look in his eyes. It didn't happen very often, but when it did, I always tried to step in. Good lad. Good lad. Okay. Chris had another friend, Gary. And before we get an image in our heads, Gary was actually kind of normal looking. Like, weirdly, NPC English bloke normal. He seemed like a decent chap, but would always throw little barbs Chris's way when we were talking, which meant, which was kind of weird, to be honest with you. One day whilst at Games Workshop, someone made an offhand comment about seeing a drug, a drug addict wandering the streets outside the store, and I could see Chris tense a little as he was playing a game. Gary looked up, triumph in his face, and looked straight at Chris. And he said, for fuck's sake, don't approach that guy outside. You might end up like Chris. 
all shivers and sweats for no reason, if you know what I mean. He touched his nose and laughed, obviously thinking he was fucking hilarious. No one laughed, mostly because they were either confused or put two and two together and realised what a prick comment this was from Gary if Chris did have an old substance problem. Yeah, this guy... If, if you're easily annoyed or you're having a bad day, hearing about this guy might just make you more furious. Just gonna say that. Just gonna say that. Might make you more annoyed. Chris went white and was dejected. When he finished his game, he quietly packed up his stuff and made to leave. I followed him and asked him if he was alright, and he said he was fine, but just wanted to leave before he said anything to Gary. I walked him back to his car, gave him a big man hug, and let him go on his way. Dude, you're a cool guy. You're a cool guy. You, you will have loads of friends, mate. Loads of friends. Come onto the Discord. You'll find loads of friends, right? You, you, you'll find loads. I never saw Chris again, ever. His social media was wiped. What? What? I never saw Chris again. Ever. His social media was wiped. This is why I should read the whole of these, because I only read this, this first bit last night, and it made me furious, and I thought, I'm going to save that for the morning. Oh, no. I never saw Chris again. Ever. His social media was wiped. I didn't know any of his family, he just fell off the face of the earth. I really hope to this day that Chris is out there okay somewhere sipping a cocktail on a beach, but honestly, I doubt it. It's a nice thought though. But I'll never stop wondering. That was not the end of Gary's shithousery though. Oh no. He would regularly cheat in games, would throw a casual fit if things didn't go well for him, and would gloat at people if they did. He would go out of his way to say nasty shit to people and then claim it was, and I quote, for the lols, or unquote, or, and I quote, because I call a spade a spade, unquote. Dude, yeah, I, I met so many dickheads in my time who say shit like that. Or I, I just don't take any shit, I call a spade a spade. <laughs> no, no, mate, no, mate, you're a cunt. That's what you are. You should get in the sea. You're a cunt. That is what you are, all right? If you've ever had to say that to somebody over something you've said, you're a twat. You're a twat. Or you were being a twat at the time, all right? It is what it is. Take your medicine and move on. Anyway. He would regularly break the rules of our Discord server with insane posts about trans people, which was, which was quite frankly weird. It made me think he had some sort of a complex or... He was closeted and were quite attracted to Tritz's head trans people. He would then cause a huge fuss when he was banned for any length of time, even though the evidence was right there that he was in the wrong and deserved his ban. We've all been there, dude. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> I'll say no more, but we've all been there. His real warning in Games Workshop came when he bought things from other Games Workshops nearby then he'd come in to return them at our Games Workshop. Now, the shop he bought them from was a massive Games Workshop store. It was near his dad's place, so when sometimes he was leaving, he was leaving work, he'd be flush with cash. He'd wander in there and buy their entire store supply, it seems. Only then he would realise later on in the month he couldn't pay his rent or something, so he'd come into our store, a struggling smaller Games Workshop store, and returned several hundred pounds worth of products all in one go. That makes me fucking grit my teeth. Ow, that is, that is not... That makes me really, really, really angry. Um, mm. Now, if you don't think that is a big deal, let me explain this. If you return a product to a Games Workshop store, then the total of your return comes off of their takings for the day, you return it. You'd think it just came off the property reports or something, and would leave the store alone if you return it to a store that is not the same store you got it from, but it doesn't. Essentially, Gary was tanking our small store by doing this once a month at least. If our store was up £200 
on the day Gary came in to return something, they would be down 400 to 500 pounds by the time he was finished returning all of his stuff. This reflected really badly on the store and he was told they would prefer him not to do it, although they couldn't tell him not to do it because it was a service that Games Workshop technically provided. He told them, and I quote, uh, It's not my place as a customer to keep you open. It's your place to serve me when I need serving. All right. Um, two things would be happening here, right? This manager should be on the phone to head office saying, I'm banning this person from my store because I can't afford to have them here anymore because your other dickhead of a manager keeps selling him £500 worth of stuff that he then returns at my store. So he's not allowed in here again. He can fuck off, you can fuck off, and that store can fuck off. All right, cool. Phone down. Honestly, word it better than that. I'm very angry at the moment, right? Take a, take a minute to calm down then call them and say, look, I'm banning this person from my store. They keep returning hundreds of pounds worth of stuff. I know that's a service that we offer, but I can't afford to keep having him do it. Can you please also have a word with manager number A or manager, manager number one over there, sorry, in the other store to stop selling him so much stuff because he keeps just returning it and he always returns it to me. And I'm a far smaller store and my store can't creak under the weight of his returns, okay? Thank you, goodbye. Put the phone down. That's how you solve this issue. Ban him now. Fucking ban him and tell him why. Tell him why. Say, go to the other store, dude, and do it there or you're banned. I know it's a service we offer, but I, I, the store will not be here if you keep doing this and you refuse to stop. So I'm going to ban you. I've already cleared it with head office. I'm going to ban you if you do it once more. You'll be banned. Done. All right? And if he wants to complain, you've already gotten in front of it with head office. They know the situation. So if he goes, nah, they won't let me do it. It's going to ban me. They go, look, listen, we, we, we offer that service as a, as a nice gesture, right? That's what we do it for. But if you take advantage of it like this, even when you've been requested not to, you will be banned from the store. They will take your side because they don't want your games workshop to close. All right? There are certain things that, that, that head office will take your side over. Having money taken away from you is one of those things. All right? Cool. Moving on. After this, he would literally walk around the store looking at products and would pick them up before loudly pro proclaiming, uh, I could get this here, but nah, I'll just get it in the other better games workshop store and then put it back on the shelf just to be unpleasant. Fuck this guy. Honest to God. This guy's a, a nut job. <laughs> this guy is a nut job. This is the most unpleasant guy. Like, literally. This guy isn't a, a neckbeard. He isn't an incel. He isn't one of these people who goes in trying to make people's lives a misery, right? Okay. He's, he's not some lefty preacher. He's not some fucking, you know, neo far rightist wearing a leather jacket walking in proclaiming things about Jews he's none of those things we've had all of those things on the channel before this guy is one of the worst people I've ever read about and there's nothing he's just a nasty person there's no politics here there's no you know um, smell there, 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 there's nothing memeable about this guy he's not a meme he's just an arsehole this is one of the biggest arseholes I've ever read about Wow. The sea was designed for you, motherfucker. Get in it. <sighs> he was never pulled up for it because mainly these were min minorly irritating things rather than big things, but everybody in the store hated this waste of human skin. Now, are you ready for your well-earned catharsis? Ooh, oh, here it comes. Okay, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to like this. There was another guy who came into the store called Russ. He was a large bloke, a boxer, and not someone to be trifled with. I like where this is going. I like where this is going. All right. He actually ran his own construction company and was doing very well for himself, so his hobby was kind of his me time. Anyway, 
Ross had a bad breakup with his ex, who essentially cheated on him, and he found out whilst she was pregnant. Oh man. Oh no. He got a paternity test after the baby was born, and found that the baby was indeed his. Because of this, he moved out, broke up with the mother, but paid his dues with the kid fr uh, from afar, wanting nothing to do with the mother at all. He contested and got visitation rights with the baby, if not full custody, but told the court and his ex he would be contesting for full custody as soon as the kid's age permitted that. Fair enough. Those are your rights, man. Those are your rights. Yeah. Fair enough. Nothing wrong with that. One day, I asked him how he, how he was doing, and, lovely bear that he is, he responds by telling me about the situation quietly whilst looking at some Necrons in the store. We agree to go for a cup of tea after the store closes and have a proper gab about it. Dude, you're, you're cool, man. Again, you should have friends. So we agree to go for a cup of tea after the store closes and have a proper gab about it. Gary overhears. Because of, because of course he fucking does. And loudly proclaims to the entire store behind us, Ha ha, so you're a deadbeat dad? That's hilarious. I see something in Russ just change. He goes very calm. He turns around and hits Gary square in the jaw, sending him back onto the painting table like literally lifting him off the floor with the force of the uppercut. Before anyone can react, Russ's boxing instincts have kicked in and he's leathered Russ another two times before he's even hit the table. Sorry, I think you mean he leathered Gary another two times before he even hits the table. His face is a mess. Russ just picks up his bag and leaves. Sure, that his life is fucked now that he's committed an assault in a public place. Yeah, man, that... Oh, no. Oh, no. The manager calls the police, which is his job, and they get a statement from a bloody and bruised Gary who is crying, seriously crying, that he is going to sue everybody in the store, including the people who stood by and let this happen. Like we could stop it at all. Want more catharsis? Okay. I like this. When the police asked everybody what had happened, and I mean everyone in the store what had happened, we said we didn't see anything. <laughs> yes! Yes! When they asked me, because, <clears throat> because Gary told them that I was talking to Russ, I told them I was talking to Russ, but that he had left before any of this had occurred. And Gary, I had assumed Gary had just fallen over, and tripped onto the table behind me. The manager, as far as I'm aware, didn't actually see this go down as he was helping a customer, so he was in the clear as well. Although Gary's injuries clearly showed he'd been, he'd been beaten to a pulp, he had a broken jaw, fractured cheek, the works, not one person in the store said a thing. There were five of us in there on a quiet Tuesday afternoon, and we all despised Gary, I knew this had been coming for a long time. Russ never came back, not wanting to put people in the store in an awkward position. I met him later that night for tea, and he was shaking. I assured him no one said anything and everything was fine. Gary did, of course, but at this point there was no proof. Games workshops do not operate CCTV cameras, and it was just Gary's word, and, and to be honest, we'd, we'd told the police that Gary just liked to say shit to rile people up in the past. Eventually, the matter was dropped, as there was literally no evidence linking Russ to hitting Gary besides Gary's say-so. Russ was such a good boxer slash hitter that his hands looked clean as a whistle, even that night, moments after the actual event. Yeah, that happens. That happens. If you know how to hit somebody, I've seen this with boxers in the past. Like my grandpa ran a boxing club in our local town. If, if, if somebody's a good boxer, they can practice for hours and, and their their wrist, their, their, their knuckles won't show it. They're that good. They're, they're very, very, very good at taking all of the sting out of a punch. You know, the shock doesn't go up their arm. They're very, very, very good at it. Especially when that training kicks in and they do it for real. Because somebody's face isn't as hard as, like, you know, some of the things you, you use the box with. Like, you, you know, it's not... 
But boxing's fucking. There's one. There's one person I wouldn't pick on. It's somebody who, who can box. I, I just. It wouldn't happen. You just. You'd be clean out before. Like a boxer doesn't do the the big wind up either. You know, like you go. You pull your fist back. A boxer doesn't doesn't do that. He shoulders you and from right from the hip, bang! Like just out of nowhere, out of nowhere. Seen it happen in bars. Seen it happen in bars. Seen it with actual boxers as well. You know, when they show you the 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 knuckles, they're not red, they're not swollen, right? That's got quite nice, neat hands, most of them. Again, yeah, I, they know how to hit people, and it doesn't doesn't leave much of a mark, unless they catch a tooth or something. Then that that sucks, but you know. <clears throat> Or they're just wailing on them, then yeah, obviously happens, but this guy obviously knew what he was doing. I never went back to the store. I ended up moving shortly after and stayed in touch with Russ. Apparently, the police had come to his house. Ooh. Questioned him and sweated him over a cup of tea. They heard that Russ had left a few minutes before Gary had was assaulted, and they and they left the matter at that. There was literally nothing they could do, without any evidence whatsoever. That was the last Russ heard of the matter, and he has since gone on, from what I can tell, to do very well for himself. I can only hope that this incident knocked some sense, humility, and perspective into Gary, but knowing what he were, what he was like, I highly doubt it. Thanks for all you do, North. Greg. Dude, that was like the most strangely cathartic experience I've had. That was like having your back popped. Oh my god. That was literally like, like, like somebody like rubbing your shoulders after a long day. Thank you very much. I hope you all got that catharsis as well. That was nice. I really enjoyed that. Um, I'll be back tomorrow with a 40k rant. And this one is the part three. The long awaited part three. I keep getting messages about it. About managers. Games workshop managers or store managers or workers. Me asking you a simple question. What's the worst thing that's ever happened in your store tomorrow's are going to be absolute fucking doozies so please come on and have a look at that video tomorrow you will absolutely love it i can guarantee it i love you all a long time i'll speak to you tomorrow have a good rest of your evening and i'll see you later have a good one bye